This customer sent us a Quest 2 with a broken screen, so today we're going to replace it with a new one. Also, stick around to find out who won the Fireworks Quest 2. I'm going to start by taking the T2 screws out of the facial insert. There's six T2 screws that hold this in. My screwdriver's lost some of its magnetism, so we're going to remagnetize really quick. It really helps with these smaller screws. That's better. Now that I've undone all the screws, the insert here has a series of clips, but all I really need to do is take my pry tool and go on each side and pop. And now it's unseated. I'll lift from the nose to make sure that I don't damage the proximity sensor ribbon, which is right here. Now that this latch is exposed, I can pop that open as well, and I'll pull the facial proximity sensor all the way out. Set that off to the side. Now using my Phillips screwdriver, I can take out the five screws that hold in the front plate. The screwdriver that I use is kind of chunky, so I need to put on an extender so that I can reach that final screw. And now I've got all the five screws removed so that we can take the faceplate off. Take the faceplate off is pretty straightforward. I'm just going to grab at the corner here and pull back. That'll pop that open, and then I'll do it on the other side. Now everything is exposed, and we start to take this apart. Go ahead and remove these camera rings. We won't need them. And then I'm going to undo this retainer, which holds in this Wi-Fi and the battery cable and the charge port. And I can do almost all of this with my Phillips screwdriver. The battery cable on this is a little sensitive, so I'm going to use my plastic pry tool to pop that open. And same with the charge port. Now I can move these both out of the way, and we can take off the Bluetooth antenna. If you need a screwdriver set that has a Phillips 000 and a T2 screwdriver for this headset, uh, we do sell those on our website. The Bluetooth antenna and this spacer bar here are held in by eight screws. Sometimes when the headset won't stay balanced on its own, I'll set the faceplate underneath it to keep it upright. Now you can just pull the Bluetooth antenna up The next thing to go is this fan. We've already taken out one of the screws here and a couple of the screws here by taking out that Bluetooth antenna. We'll take out that last Phillips triple zero. And there's one more T2 screw that hides above the LED indicator. This LED indicator is adhered on here, but it's not very strong. I can usually just pop this off with tweezers. And then the fan is latched underneath the frame here. So I'm gonna pull up on the frame and pull down on the fan. And then I'm gonna pull directly down on this fan connection. After that, I'm going to go ahead and remove this heat sink. Once the heat sink is removed, I can go ahead and start taking out all of these cables around the board. You don't have to do this in a specific order, you just have to be gentle. These ribbon latches are fairly delicate, so just be slow and easy with them. And pull straight back. Try not to wiggle in or out too much, because these little plastic legs here that hold the cables in will break off. There's almost always a little piece of tape that holds these two cables in, so I'm going to undo these latches. And then I'm going to slowly pull back on both of them. And then I'm going to remove this tape. Trying to remove the tape before almost always does some damage to the latch, so I try to avoid that. Now we need to remove the motherboard, and I'll start by taking out the Phillips screws that hold it in. There's one, two, three, four of them. They are not magnetic. They are non-ferrous screws, so I need to take them out using a combination of my screwdriver and my tweezers. For this little screw right here, I need a 3.5 hex bit. And now the motherboard should be free to come out. Try to come out as straight as you can because the motherboard is hooked on these. Now we can remove this Wi-Fi antenna so the LCD can come out. Before the LCD comes out though, I'll take these four screws out. We'll go back to the Phillips bit for this one. Some of these cables are still adhered to this LCD assembly, and the speaker wires are sometimes hooked in here on these plastic clips. So I'm gonna make sure that nothing is holding in this LCD assembly before we try to pull it out. This battery connector is usually the culprit. Now the LCD should just come right out. Just like that. We're going to set this frame off to the side. I'm not going to need it for a second. What we're left with is a combination of the LCD panel, which is this thin bit right here, the assembly for the lenses, the lenses themselves, and then this camera array. The camera array is screwed into this aluminum frame here, and all of this will come off just as one component. 
I'll go ahead and remove the aluminum chassis with the cameras on it so that we can just replace the LCD and the lens assembly. There's eight screws that hold in this aluminum frame to the LCD assembly. Two here, three here, one here, one here, and one here. We're going to take all of these out so that we can pull this off. Now the LCD assembly can just come off. There is sometimes a little bit of adhesive at the base here, but it's non consequential to the repair process. Now this is free and it can go on our new LCD. We're going to align that and now I can screw all this back in. Now that all my screws are back in place, I can go ahead and reinstall the assembly. This is a pretty straightforward process. We just need to make sure that all these cables are out of the way before we force everything in. It would be a travesty to come this far and then damage a cable. You can see I've got my two speaker wires, my power button, Wi-Fi antenna 1, power cable, Wi-Fi 2, I've got my proximity sensor and my LED indicators, and my cameras, as well as my charge port. And I can go ahead and screw this back in. And then we can start putting our motherboard back where it needs to go. Before you start screwing in here, confirm that all of our cables are on the outside. Again, it's a real big pain if our Wi-Fi antenna or one of our proximity sensors or our LCD connector are behind the motherboard when we screw it in. Now that our motherboard's secured, I can go ahead and start putting all the cables back where they need to go. We'll go ahead and put our heat sink back on at this point. At this point, I've got enough things plugged in to where I can plug it in and test it and make sure that the LCD is functioning properly. Now we can go ahead and put the fan back in place. Kind of like the inverse of how we took it off, this has to slide up and hook underneath the frame. There are a couple of little holes that have to line up for this LED sensor. Once those are lined up, it should just sit flush. Next, we're going to plug our fan back in, and then we can put our Bluetooth antenna and the spacer bar back in here. Out of habit, I usually put the long screws in first, but you can put these screws in any order. Everything looks like it's back in place to me, so what we're going to do now is we're going to put the hex screw back in place and then our retaining rod can just go over the charge port and the battery cable. We've got one of these little short screws here and another short screw. Finally that last Wi-Fi antenna can go ahead and clip back into the motherboard and we can latch that in so that it holds that in place. My little camera rings can go back in place. The one with two holes goes on this side and the one with one hole goes on this side facing the headset looking this way. And then our faceplate can go back on. Nothing tricky about putting the faceplate back on. Just needs to be lined up properly and clipped in place. I like to check and make sure that everything's flush around both sides. No issues there. And then we can screw that back in. Now my faceplate is plugged in and we can go ahead and reinstall the proximity sensor. You want to make sure that this is seated properly before you latch it down. Having this misaligned may result in the headset not turning on at all. Now we can clip this in. And I'm going to do one final test to make sure that everything boots up and tests properly. This proximity sensor actually did have a little bit of damage to it that I didn't notice earlier. Just a little bit of liquid damage right there. So we're going to go ahead and replace that too. Alrighty, now that everything seems like it's tested and working, we can go ahead and screw these T2 screws back in. Quick polish of the lens here. And this headset's ready to go. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and subscribe. We, we really appreciate it. It helps us build our community, and, and hopefully it helps us reach out to people who need our services or need parts and repairs for their headsets and controllers. We're also ready to announce the winner of our Fireworks Quest giveaway. The winner is Brandy Tate 3620 So, Brandy, congratulations on winning. Guys, be sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more giveaways. We're going to be doing one here in probably another week or so. So if you missed out on this one, we got another one coming. Thanks, everybody. We will see you on the next one.